Hello, you are watching Tulip Swift. It is the end of the year and I'm going to pick 15 books that were the best that I read this year. Not all of them came out this year. It was pretty easy to find which ones were the best. The hard part was ranking them. I started with the ones that were the worst of the best and then the last one I do will be my favorite book of 2015. It was just really hard to put these in order. Okay, my list starts with Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins. This is an adorable romance about a girl who falls in love with you guessed it, The Boy Next Door. Stephanie Perkins is really good at writing a book that you cannot put down. I love this book. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It was awesome. The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender. The premise of the book is that magic kind of runs in our family, follows generations of Ava Lavender's family, and then we finally get to her story, which is heartbreaking and beautiful. It feels so long when you're reading it, like in a good way. Like I feel like I went through a huge journey. It was such an amazing read. Number 13 is Paper Towns by John Green. The movie came out this year. I had to read this before I saw the movie. This is my favorite John Green book and I've read three of them. This book is about a nerdy boy who falls in love with a beautiful girl who's very mysterious. They go on adventures and he's trying to solve her mystery. He finds out a lot about himself and her and the world and teenagers and society. This book has no limits. It really just goes everywhere in every direction. John Green writes amazing dialogue. I'm so glad I finally read this book. Been sitting around here for a while. Number Number 12 is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This is a high fantasy book. I've never read something so fantasy ever. Like it's just like fantasy. It made me think and it made me theorize and it just blew me away at the ending. I think the ending was like the best part. This girl lives a mysterious life that she doesn't really know where she came from and she kind of keeps a lot of secrets from her best friends. Uh, she's an artist and she is working for a mysterious man who dabbles in the supernatural business and then she dives into that world. Crazy things happen and so much of it is written in flashback. I was so impressed. This book is so well written. I was really blown away. Number 11 is Beautiful Redemption. This is the fourth book in the Castor Chronicles, the last book. It was amazing and it really wraps up the series so nicely. This series is very crazy. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Vampire Diaries in the sense that there is no limit to the supernatural world. Anything can happen and it can happen at any time and that's what I loved about this. I mean Ethan is such a great protagonist. Number 10 goes to Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare in the Infernal Devices about Tessa. She is kind of confused where she stands between human and shadow hunter and warlock. So she's taken into the London Institute and this is the 1800s. They're facing some enemies and she's going through a lot. And this book is so full of drama and suspense and I really really love this. Even better than Clockwork Prince is Clockwork Princess. This is the third book and it was so great. Everyone raves about this. I have to say this series was not as good as the Mortal Instruments. To me, I felt like I've been with these characters for so long but it was only three books and it's just... It's an amazing story. It's a love story. It's so many things. It was a really good book, but it was definitely had its sad parts. Number eight is Pretty Little Liars by Sarah Shepard. This is the first book out of like 15 the TV show is based on. I have to say, I was not expecting it to be this good. It was so exciting. It was so um, romantic and mysterious and scary and f I could not put it down. I think this is such a great read. It's exactly everything I want in a book. Number seven goes to the Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, and Maureen Johnson. This is a collection of stories about Magnus Bane from the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices and the Dark Artifices and Tales from Shadowhunter Academy. Whew. So many people have this on their bookshelf and they haven't read it yet. I have to say, if you're a huge fan of the Mortal Instruments, and I know you are, you need to pick this up. When you get to the most uh, modern chapters where he meets Alec and he's living in the Institute and then the chapters with Will and Will's son, they're so good. And this book is so crazy awesome. It was amazing. Number six is The Last Sacrifice. This is the final book in Vampire Academy. They have this crazy awesome movie that's by uh, the people who made Mean Girls. It's on Netflix right now so I think you should check it out. This series is awesome. It's about a girl named Rose Hathaway who's training to be a vampire slayer but there's like good vampires and there's bad vampires and she falls in love with someone who she can't really be with but she's in love with him anyways and you know how it goes. She goes on all these crazy adventures and the last book was so good because she is like a new person and she's so grown up and I'm just so happy to have read this series. I want to read it like 10 more times. It was 
really, really good. Number five is the Tales from Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare and multiple other authors. This came out online, one chapter a month. It will come out bound, just like the Bane Chronicles. So I read the whole thing because I got it every single month and it started out very shaky. I did not think I would like it. Um, about halfway through it picks up and it's a great story. Um, these you do have to read in order and they have very important, important events that are important to the Shadowhunter world. So when it comes out, you need to read it. It's just like a seventh book in the Mortal Instruments. It was a great adventure and it follows Simon and I love Simon. And I just have to say, Tales from Shadowhunter Academy, on point on point. Number four is Four by Veronica Roth. This is the collection of four stories that take place from Tobias Eaton's point of view from the Divergent trilogy. I was not expecting this book to be so amazing, but it was. It was so, so good. Messages from Veronica Roth that I don't know if you knew this, but she started writing Divergent from his point of view and he was supposed to be the main character, but then Triss kind of took over. She led us through the series instead. Okay, we are on the top three books of 2015. Um, number three is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I finally read this book. It has been so praised by everyone online. I don't think I've ever read a book where the main character, who's a female, starts the book as a warrior. Usually she's like kind of in the background and then she steps up and she's training and then she's like really strong. This book starts with a woman named Selena Sardothian who is an assassin and she's in a competition to be the king's assassin but he doesn't really know that she's kind of against him. It was really good. All right, we're on number two. Surprise, it's Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. This book it takes a whole new turn on the series. Selena is kind of in isolation. She's not really with the people that we saw her with the first two books. I didn't think I'd like this efforts because it, it was so different from um, anything that's happened in the Throne of Glass series but it ended up being like my number two book of 2015 like it was really good in the end all the new characters are spot-on amazing and this is also a gorgeous book okay the number one book of 2015 I had such a hard time picking this one I ended up picking this one because I read it so recently and I feel like it's the start of a great series like everything I just told you is basically tied for number one it was really hard to put these in order but I gave my number one to The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. And this book was scary and it was real. There's crazy plot twists and I just, I loved it so much. And I think that Alexandra Bracken is on to great things. I can't wait to read Passenger. Thanks for watching. I love you. Bye.